Hi everyone, Nigel Saunders here. I just finished watering all the trees in the plant room here. They all look like they're very happy. Let's head outside now and begin today's work in the bonsai zone. I've also watered all my trees in the basement here. Usually this time of year, uh, rainwater is hard to come by. Uh, it's usually very, very cold outside and the ground is all covered in snow. But this year, the temperature has kind of been hovering around the freezing point for a lot of the winter. And I've been able to collect lots of rainwater. I've kept my barrel up in the plant room and the one in the greenhouse topped up. So I've got lots of water this year, which is kind of a nice bonus of a mild winter. All right, out to the greenhouse we go. All my pots are still safely tucked away under the tarp there. And I have a tree picked out for today. I'll show you what I'll be working on today. So there it is on the bench. It is my Cotoneaster. My Cotoneaster here is from nursery stock. I root pruned it and repotted it last spring for the first time. And boy, did I give it a root pruning. I'll, I'll show you some of the images of what was left after I pruned the roots. Now. Wow. That is a extensive root system. So I'll begin combing out the soil. I think this is going to be quite a difficult task because here's a look at my root system. I'm going to wash it now. I'll bring my root rake with me and try and get some more of the soil out between the roots and get a, you know, get a nice clear view of what's going on. All right, into the water the root system goes. Swish it around. So my aim is to get a nice flowing root base that goes down into the soil. There's one here sticking straight up. I'm going to get rid of that one. That one's gone. There's a couple here. You can see how the roots flow from the trunk line down to the soil. And then there's one that sticks up here. Get rid of that. There's another one here sticking straight up. Get rid of that. So I'm going to cut away these roots coming from the bottom here. I'm looking to see where my root plane will be. It might be down here and this one might have to come off. Even though it's a beautiful flowing root, after it gets to about here it does all kinds of strange things and there might be a better root down lower. So this is what I would call a fairly difficult root system where, you know, the base of the tree isn't obvious. You don't have a lot of nice radial roots. But you can still see I'm working at sorting it out. And, there, you know, there's only so much you can do each time you repot the tree. I can sort some things out, but other things have to be grown. There it goes. Easy as that. So there you can see the bottom now. I've got a radio root system. It looks quite nice. I, I'm actually quite pleased with it. However, I'm not done with it yet. I'm going to clean up all these roots, rewash it, and we'll come in and do the final root pruning. So here's a root. It starts this diameter, it kind of bends a bit, stays the same diameter all the way out. So there's not much change of direction from this to here. There's no change of taper and there's no ramification. So I've got to cut it back. And I think there's a little fine root there. I could come right back to here. Parallel with the ground level, like that. So all the new roots will grow from that tip. I think that is pretty good for the first root pruning. Now that's really taking it back, but I think it'll be worth it if the tree lives. I think this will probably be the front of the tree here. It's quite beautiful, actually. It's uh. If it lives, it's better than I ever expected. So I think that'll be the front of the tree. So now I've got to find a pot for it and get it planted. So here is the tree today. It uh, survived that severe root pruning. It recovered and started growing really well over the summer. Today, I'm going to prune all these branches back, selecting the ones I want to keep, shortening the new growth, setting it up for the next growing season. My Katoni Aster is growing in a 3D printed pot, and this is printed with ColorFab's Engen plastic. And so far it's stood up really well. This is probably 
four, maybe five years old now, and it still looks as good as the day it was printed. I'm going to begin today by weeding the planting, and then once it's weeded, I can step back and see, examine the tree, and see what branches I need to prune. So here I go with the weeding. So I'll just try and pull these out, roots and all. There's also a bit of liverwort in here that I'll have to pull out. Don't want that in the planting. Now I did plant this quite deeply, this tree in the pot to make sure the roots were safely in the soil. So I can see the root flares just starting there. So I will I'll trim the soil level back a bit this year, making it a little shallower in the pot. And I think that's got all the weeds. The rest is moss, good stuff. Get some of this moss off the trunk here. That looks good. Okay, let's step back now and have a look at the tree, discuss the styling of it and uh, the future goals. Here is a look at the front of the tree now. So I'll rotate it around so I can see it from all angles. So here I go, rotating around to the right side view. See some big cuts here that are starting to heal really nicely. Coming around to the back view, the left side view. And back to the front. So I still think this front is quite nice. You'll notice that the tree has begun to leaf out and it's only mid-January which is not a good thing. However if I keep it in the greenhouse here just slightly above freezing it should do fine until spring comes. I've reduced the temperature in the greenhouse here. I'm watching it much more carefully uh, turning it off uh, and turning it down on some of the warmer days. So I'm trying to keep it just slightly above freezing in the greenhouse. I'm going to begin the pruning now and you can see there's a sucker coming up from the roots here that I'm going to prune off. I don't want sort of a clump style tree at all. So I'll come in and prune that back. Here is a look at the tree from the front view and you can see all these branches are new branches that grew in last summer. I had pruned it down to basically a trunk line and my intent was to regrow all the branches because they were all too thick and coarse looking. Cotone asters grow in a very angular style. Um, you can see most of these branches come off the trunk at 90 degrees. They don't, you know, there's no graceful transitions. And when I prune these branches shorter, they'll grow new shoots that'll be, again, very angular looking. And I, I think that's the style you need to go with on these trees is an angular kind of style. If you try and make them smooth and graceful, well, you're going to be fighting the natural growth characteristics of this tree for the rest of the tree's life. And uh, I think you might as well just go with the angular growth that these Cotone asters do. So I'm going to shorten all these new shoots back. You can see they're kind of long and skinny. So with the clip and grow, I will shorten them back. They'll subdivide, create new branches, and then slowly over many years, these branches will thicken up and I'll get a branch that has taper, movement, and age to it. Um, you can wire these trees. Uh, you could wire it into any shape you want. But again, you're kind of fighting the natural characteristics of the tree if you try and wire this to look like a, a more normal looking tree. So I'm going to use Clip and Grow. I'm going to shorten all the branches back and decide which branches I want to keep and which ones I want to remove. All right, here I go with the pruning. I'm rotating the tree, kind of looking at the front view here. So I've, I've got a few skinny new branches coming at the bottom here. This one grows straight towards the viewer. I'd rather keep this one, so I'm going to prune this one off. You can see the tree isn't really firm in the pot. It wiggles. So that means the roots haven't filled the pot yet and it hasn't kind of stabilized. So I don't need to repot it this year. I'll let it go another year 
and uh, hopefully it'll fill the pot with roots this year. So I'm going up the tree. I've got, I left a stub of a branch on here. I don't know if it lived, but this part of it certainly did. So I'm going to prune that off shorter. I'm going to prune it back. I think this is too far out where this leaf is. There's a bud here, so I think I'm going to go back to here. Pruning that off shorter. So that takes care of that part of the branch. Now, out the back of that branch, there's another little branch coming. I'm going to prune it off short because I don't want it crossing across the trunk line. I have a bud right here so I can prune it off very short and it'll grow more out the back of the tree in a more kind of graceful flow. So that takes care of that branch. I'm coming up the tree now. I have a leader here and I've got one that's kind of growing on the inside of the curve here. So I want to take these two out. So they're going like that. So you can see that looks much better. It kind of flows upwards. Now on the top I've got, if you look at the trunk line, this flows really nicely with the trunk line. So I'm definitely keeping this branch. But the one off to the side doesn't. So I'm going to remove this one. Like that. Keeping those nice flow lines. Um, off of that branch that comes out the front here, uh, this one kind of comes straight towards the viewer, so I'm going to take that one off. It's an eye poker branch, so that comes off. And then this one also comes straight towards, straight towards you, so that's going to come off. Like that. And then the other branches, it comes up and it divides into two here quite nicely. But I do need to shorten this one, and I'm just trying to think where I'm going to prune it. Um, I think to here. Shortening it like that. So that's got this branch pruned up. Now, I've kind of got two leaders here. Um, well, actually, I got three. I got one at the back there. I think I only want to keep one. But it doesn't hurt to have a backup. So I'm going to keep these two front ones and I think I'm going to remove this one at the back. Like that. So I've got two leaders, two possible leaders here. They both flow quite nicely. If one were to die off or something, I have a backup. And then I'm looking at this branch here. I've got one growing from the inside of a curve here. I've got to remove that. Like that. There's a dead branch here I can remove. Like that. And then I'm looking at this stub, so it comes out, it divides into two, and they're really splayed far apart. I'm going to remove a small little branch there. Uh, I have one that kind of flows nicely out the front here, so I'm going to keep this one. I'm going to remove this other one here. They're going side by side, keeping that one. And then I'm going to remove these, or not remove them, I'm going to prune these ones back shorter and see what happens with them. Like that. So now that leaves me with this branch over here. Um, I don't think I want this branch here. I've got one here, here, and here. I think it's just too much in that area. So this one's coming right off. Like that. And then I've got one coming out the back here. Uh, I've got an upright one here, which I like, and I'm not so keen of that one because this one will flow upwards. It'll create a crown to this tree. This one doesn't really do much, and I don't want two branches in that place, so I'm going to prune off this one like that. Yeah, that'll look nice in the future. And then at the bottom down here, I've got another sucker. I'll get rid of that. I've got a long one coming out the back here, and I've got to decide, do I want branches that low on this tree? And I probably don't. Uh, even this one is probably too low. I want the structure up here, not down here. So uh, I'm going to take these lowest ones off.
and this one too. I think, let me see. Yeah, I, I don't want anything down that low. Like that. So you can see now I have a trunk coming up to a branch structure. And I think it's going to look quite nice when it grows out this summer. Or if it grows out this winter like it's trying to do. <laughs> well, hopefully it doesn't. So if a tree does break dormancy early like this, it's not the worst thing in the world. I mean, cotoneasters don't need too long of a dormant period in winter. They're sort of, uh, what's the word? Um, more of a temperate type tree. They need a cool period, but they don't need like a whole winter of freezing temperatures to stay healthy. So the important thing, if they do leaf out, you can see some of the leaves, is that it doesn't freeze, that you keep it above freezing or you know, you try to. Uh, if it starts getting frozen, you can lose all those new leaves. They'll, they'll just die off, and then the tree has to generate more leaves, uh, sort of back budding, and it's very hard on the tree. And you might get away with it once, but eventually your tree will succumb to, uh, it'll weaken and die. So it's very important that you keep these leaves alive after it's leafed out, that they don't die off and become, you know, dry up and then it's got to generate all new leaves. So that's what I'll try and do. I'll try and keep it above freezing. I, I could put this tree in the basement, which would guarantee it wouldn't freeze, but it's a little warm. It uh, hovers around 10 degrees Celsius in the basement, so it probably would leaf out and I'd have to then bring it out in spring when it warms up, uh, keeping the leaves on it. And, so I'm going to keep it out here in the greenhouse and try and keep it just above freezing is my goal. Here is a look at everything I took off the tree today. So, you know, quite a few small branches. And I think the tree's set up to grow for this uh, coming summer. I think it'll uh, do quite well this summer. I think, you know, the roots are starting to recover. It's getting some branches on it. I think it'll have a good growing season. And I'm really looking forward to developing this tree. I think it's going to have tons of character and it's going to be a nice shape in the future. I think it's going to look really good with a crown up here and when all this kind of thickens and heals it'll look really, it'll have a really kind of gnarly trunk on it. Yeah, I think it'll have tons of character. So I'm very happy my Ketoniaster isn't a disaster. I'll give my Ketoniaster a water and then put it back on the bench. I should do. I've also moved my Ketoniaster from the upper shelves here down to the lower shelves where it'll stay cooler. So I think that's going to help it a lot being on the cool floor down here. It's time now for today's update. Today's update is my Virginia Creeper Vine. I started this, I think, two years ago from a, I just pulled one out of the backyard there. And it doesn't really have a style yet. I, I stuck, I think, two, maybe three cuttings in this pot. Um, the one has grown really, really well. If I can show you how long the vine got, you can see quite long. The other one, it only grew this long. And the other one, it just sort of, I don't know, if, I think it, it could be attached to this one, but it didn't grow all that much at all. So really this one took off. Uh, none of them have a tree form. So I think it's just a matter of shortening them back once again, let them grow another year. Maybe eventually these trunks will thicken and I can get some kind of a tree-like form to these uh, Virginia creeper vines. All right, here I go. I'm going to start by pruning this really, really long vine back. And I'm just going to chop it off right here. Like that. And the other one, I will cut off 
I think right about here. So I've just got these stumps, so they should grow again over the next summer. Here is a close-up view of my vines. So they're, uh, yeah, nothing yet. I think this one maybe has some potential. It has a nice tapered base. But I'll just keep growing, clip and growing them, see what they turn into. I will seal these cuts. They're very juicy. I'm going to seal them with my rubber cement. So there is the one sealed. And here is the other sealed up. That should just stop all that sap leaking out. Hopefully it'll kind of prevent dieback down the vine. The Catoni Aster is ready for spring. My Virginia Creeper is ready for spring and I'm ready for spring too, but it's still a couple of months away. So I'll just have to be patient and keep working away. So that is all for today. I'm Nigel Saunders. Thanks for joining me in the Bolts Eye Zone.